Hello, and thank you for joining us for today's master's class. This is Carla Keene, the CEO and developer of ClarityRx, and thank you for joining us today. Today's class is about tips on building your clientele and client retention. By definition, what does success mean? It really means the accomplishment of an aim or purpose. So I'm going to question you what your purpose or aim is about building your business. Let's understand the money mindset first. Often, estheticians like myself and like you really don't see ourselves as salespeople or think about money because we're so passionate about what we do. But I've learned that success isn't always about money, and that's okay. It's really more about loving what you do and also becoming financially successful at doing it. There are some things to remember before we get started. Building a loyal book of business can take time and lots of hard work and patience. It's easier to retain an existing customer than it is to acquire new ones. And last but not least, never forget what I call the six seconds rule. Six seconds are all you have to form a positive or negative impression of yourself and ultimately your business. So make sure your first impression can be your very best one. Do you have obstacles that are getting in your way? Let's discuss what those might be. What's really holding you back from developing your dream business? Is it a lack of self-confidence or low self-esteem or not feeling educated enough to be that confident? These are common obstacles that I see. How do you become more confident as an esthetician? Really, it's rooted in education, so we're going to cycle back to that education factor a lot throughout the slides today. But I'm going to challenge you to create constant reminders to keep yourself on track, on the success track, and that means setting goals and expectations for yourself. Um, these are the three building blocks for success, vision, strategy, and diligence. Let's talk about vision first. What do you really envision for your book of business? Be very clear with what you see and what you want or what your goals look like. What do you want that business to look like? How many hours are you willing to spend doing it? What kind of clients do you want to attract? What kind of money do you want to make? Write down what it is that you want and start to visualize that outcome. What would it really feel like to have this success? Next is strategy. How do we implement those thoughts and goals? First, you must really believe that you can truly achieve what you want. Create a plan and then strategize and establish reasonable goals to meet them. And last but not least is diligence. If you remain consistent with the belief in yourself and stay committed to your plan, you will notice positive shifts to start to take place in your business. Your business is a business within a business, and you have the potential to reach whatever feelings you like or desire within your own business. Your level of commitment will determine at what pace this occurs, though. So here are 10 top tips that I want to provide you to build and retain your clients. First, let's empower yourself to be the expert through education. Get to know your products, your services, your equipment, your supplies. Think of all the things you need to know and empower yourself to be the expert. To succeed, we have to be the best at what we do. We know that our industry is extremely competitive. In this industry, we have to work at, in order to be successful, to be standing out amongst our competitors. And education really is the key to do just that. What, if anything, is holding you back from becoming the best esthetician you can be? These are some of the things that I'm going to challenge to ask yourself. We should aspire to be the go-to skincare expert in your demographic or your market or your area. This can take some time, some diligence, and again, a lot of hard work. Our clients are looking for us for expert advice, so we have to become that for them. When they visit a licensed skincare professional like ourselves, 
They assume that we know more than the counter girls at the big box retail stores, and that's because we do, or we should. We are the ones that have gone through formal training and are licensed to provide clients with quality, efficacious, safe results that they deserve, both in services and in products. However, sadly, we're still losing a large percentage of retail sales to non-licensed counter staff at a retail level across all market segments. So from CVS to Target, we also see it now on QVC, HSN, and through other retail outlets. So what do we need to do to stand out? We need to become educated. We need to become the expert that our clients want us to be. We must learn what it is that our clients need us to be, and then to establish the trust in us that they only buy from us as professionals. Number two, you're, again, you're in control of your success. What do you envision? But if you haven't made selling a focus or part of your strategy to build your business, you must really start now. Although we don't think ourselves as sales people, Think of yourself as someone who's providing solutions. This kind of makes a shift in how we approach things. But remember, this is your business. Again, within a business even, even if you work for others, you're in control of your success. All businesses require sales to thrive, and that includes yours. So we got to kind of wrap our head around sales in an aspect of providing solutions. You're responsible for creating your income. And the best news ever is the sky is the limit. So we know that we can cap out in as much labor as we can, can do in a week's time. But we also have this retail component, which really allows us to push the limits. List your ideas, strategies, and goals to increase your sales abilities and reach new monetary goals this way. Number three, results or client satisfaction. I could stress on this point for a very long time because building your book of business and client retention really is rooted in happy, satisfied clients who see results. These are the clients who are most likely to continue to spend money with you and more importantly, refer potential new clients to you. So how important are results? Ultimately, this is what's bringing our clients back. This is a mandatory piece to achieve success. So then again, if we roll it back even further, results are really, again, rooted in completely understanding your products, your services, your equipment, your supplies, in providing services that are going to result in a safe, efficacious goal. There are many spokes to a wheel in delivering these results. These can be proper techniques, service protocols, retail products, equipment, and creating an overall amazing client experience. We really have to achieve all of the spokes in this wheel to get our clients to come back. When we deliver results, we become more trusted by our clients. They tend to refer more clients to us, and we build our business, and we make more money. One thing I've learned over the course of my career is that money follows passion. Passion rarely follows money. So stay true to your passion. And in really order to be successful, we have to be passionate first. So keep learning. Do what you love and love what you do. The money part inevitably will follow. Number four, building relationships with your clients. This is the least costly, most efficacious way to boost your revenue is to build relationships. Clients want to buy from people they know, like, and trust. We are 10 times more likely to get a past client to come back through the door than to add a brand new client. That's powerful in building your book of business. Number five, customize your approach for retention. What do I mean by that? It really comes down to spending time and getting to know your clients. Throughout the consultation process in the spa, take detailed notes about that client. We all know how charting skincare conditions and protocols are important, but also take the time to jot down some personal information about your clients as well. 
This will help to build what I call the know, like, and trust factors that are really necessary to build your business. Refer to your notes often before the appointment and make sure that you approach some sort of personal thing that's going on in their life. It makes them feel important and special when you ask specific questions about their life. It will also help you be a better esthetician when customizing treatments and home care, specifically to your client's needs and lifestyle. Number six, follow-up calls. I absolutely love follow-up calls. So much takes place on these calls. One is that it truly sets you apart as a professional, and it's another way to build a trusting relationship with your client. As well as two to three days after the appointment, we can assess if the clients have any questions for us. If we were unsuccessful at booking their subsequent visit or their next spa visit with you, this is also a time in which we can try to schedule their next visit. Thank them for coming in, check whether they have any questions or concerns that they need to share with you, and try to get them to book their next visit. Most clients will thank you for calling and be taken aback by their thoughtfulness. Over everything, people remember how they, you made them feel. And so if we can leave them feeling trustworthy in us, that we're confident in what we do, that we are the expert, that they can come to us with their skincare needs, this will make them feel more confident about coming back to you and referring business to you again. Number seven, set goals, take action, and make you sure that you follow through on that. This is what will bring your business to the next level and increase your income. Write down your goals, weekly, daily, action items. This means both goals in setting service dollars, retail dollars, service to retail ratios, all of which keeps you on track and measure yourself so that every week you look at this, you should see incremental growth. And when not, we can ascertain why, what's not working, and to try to change it up until we find out what that magical sweet spot is to grow your practice. But setting goals is really mandatory if you want to see your business flourish. Number eight, invest in yourself. The majority of successful people that I know also find a mentor or a coach. This can mean investing also in your education, whether it's time or money or both. Having guidance or support saves you hours of time. Take advantage of some of these social media platforms or user groups in the industry that are so powerful and less brand driven, but more really about peer to peer communication. It will also help your mindset to stay positive, which is really also a magnet for clients. Being passionate, exuding positivity, really is a message that's very strong to our clients. Throughout your career, seek guidance from books or coaching programs, continue education classes, industry associations, and trade shows. Put yourself out there and invest in yourself to be the best you can be. All of these will provide the type of support that you will help you build your growth. Number nine, getting your clients to reschedule. This can be challenging, um, but a client will schedule if we wrap our heads around a few things. First, we have to give them a reason why they really need to come back. To do this, we have to create what I call long-term skin wellness plans or treatment plans for clients. Clients want to know that we have a plan in place for them to meet their goals. Give them a reason why they should come back. Lay out specific plans, what you're going to do now, what your plan is to do next, and give them incentive to come back in. I often do not do the same treatment twice in a row. For instance, if they come to visit me, I make sure that their second visit is something completely new and novel. More excitement is created for the next visit with a different focus. Also, educate them on coming in regularly that will give them the best results. Convince them that it's not just nicety, but rather a necessity to have skin care. This means you must practice what you preach. You have to partake in also receiving these services and using the products that you carry. And number 10, really last but not least, in fact, one of the most important things is how do you market yourself? You have to get out from behind the chair to do this. Hosting or speaking at events, 
this comes again by being rooted in knowledge. But put yourself out there. Simply search a five-mile radius for different women's or men's organizations. Write them a letter, call or email them with an introductory form letter that introduces yourself and your businesses, your services, your products. Let them know who you are and why you're interested and what you can do for them. And schedule them to either you to go to them and speak at their events or you host their events at your location. Community networking, or what I call tables in the community, is such a great way to meet new prospective clients face-to-face -face as well. Again, outside from behind the chair, out in the community, setting up a table at a gym or organic food market or yoga studio or at trade shows or women's organizations, all of these are very powerful. And to do this right, you may want to just barter some complimentary services to owners of these types of businesses to allow you to set up a table that sometimes works. Provide incentives for each of the passerbys to stop and listen to what you're offering. Give out samples, brochures, giveaways, raffles. Some form of audiovisual is very powerful in these focus settings as well. Become the local press darling for skincare. By doing this, I mean to also contact your lo local media contacts. This means radio, television, newspapers, local websites, city guides, websites that are city guides, calendar of events for your city. Find out all the things that you have available to you and go out and seek who the contact person is and see if you can't get some local press for yourself. These press agents also, in all of these mediums, like to know what's hot, what's new, what's trending. So we have a plan again and approach them with a plan. Host a media event and invite them to attend maybe at your location. Create what I call a PR night where you're having the local media come to you and learn. And you present what's hot, what's new, and do some demonstrations, do some raffles. This goal is to inform them on anything that ties into your business, whether it's a monthly promotion, get them to write a column, an article, or a blog about you and your business, or be picked up by local television broadcasts. We've seen this happen so often, and it actually costs you nothing but your time investment. Also, write a press release and send it along with a cover letter or some pictures or images to local businesses so they can learn about who you are um, and also to the local media. Oftentimes, you might find a local paper that will do a press release for you at no charge. There are also some great online press release software programs that helps with web crawlers to get these messages out to your local markets. Some of them are complimentary or free of charge, and some of them have a very nominal charge. So writing press releases, although that seems real old school, still really has an impact on your local press. Be sure when you do any of these to take pictures at these events. These are things that can be used on websites or social media sites, newsletters, portfolio books. And then one other thing is if there's anything you could do for charity, that also is a really strong message. And don't overlook the power of social media. Uh, create your own Facebook page. Create an audience. Uh, create Account and follow beauty bloggers and other influencers in your market. Get to know who those people are. You can really take your business and your brand to the next level. And when I talk about your brand, I mean you as an individual. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, Google+, all of these are very powerful in building your practice and are really very nominal. But a couple things to think about when you do social media, and we take some of these things for granted, but create a look and personality that you want to be recognizable for you and your business. Be constant and consistent with your brand message and your name and your logos, and be aware of 
sharing expertise and grow a following. Blogs or vlogs are very popular to do this in a local market. And then really keeping it professional and not personal. It's very easy to mix the two, and I think there's a mixed message in there. I think we should keep our personal away from our professional uh, social media platforms. And be cognizant of imagery and words and attitude and professionalism. When you see negativity or bad imagery or things that really don't belong on a business Facebook page, it diminishes what others may think about you and your business. Okay, I want to just thank you for that. Hopefully you can take some of those little nuggets and put them into building your practice. If we can be any support or help with that, lean toward your vendors also for collateral materials and images or anything that we can help in the way of promotion for brochures and giveaways and samples. Be sure to reach out to us, okay? Thank you so much for joining and have a great afternoon. Bye-bye.